Welcome to a More Beautiful World podcast with Susan Renee, a place for those of us with the desire to expand our consciousness, tap into higher vibrations of love, and to connect into a community where together we can make the world a more beautiful place. I'm so eager to share with you what I've learned on my journey in discovering how we're all connected and how what we do for one, we do for us all. Here, I'll be sharing my own experiences, knowledge, and expertise for how you can heal, transform, and ascend your being so that together we can create the more beautiful world we all know is possible. Well, hello and welcome, tribe, to part two of my psilocybin ceremonies. And we are going to talk today about when things come together. So if you remember or were tuning in last episode, we talked about when things fall apart. And that was my psilocybin ceremony part one. Um, But in this episode today, I'm going to be sharing part two of my story on how things fell apart in my life and when they actually started coming together. Um, This part of the story is a little bit more uplifting because things are coming together for me. Um, And I do believe it showcases how when we set an intention to better ourselves and to beautify our world and, and then take inspired action to do so and to make it happen, things really can get better. So I trust that um, the story that I will share today um, will help you see how powerful plant medicines can be. And who knows, maybe even open your mind to their therapies. Maybe it will help break down stigmas uh, or fears of of them. Um, And again, I'm not saying everybody has to do plant medicines. If they call to you, though, um, I do believe they offer an immense amount of healing. So let's dive in uh, to the episode. So if you remember again from last episode, a quote, when things fall apart, they are actually coming together. It really is such a powerful statement. And I think it's an important one to remind ourselves when our lives do feel like they're falling apart. So if you missed last episode, um, I was sharing how my life fell apart between my divorce in June of 2017, all the way um, really to the beginning of COVID in early 2020. And I share how bringing in some intentional use of psilocybin mushrooms really kickstarted my plant medicine journey. And um, so if you haven't watched or listened to that one, please check out that episode because it will give you some context to make the most of this episode. And this entire spiritual journey um, that I have been on, including my plant medicine ceremonies, which were were just you know starting at the beginning of my plant medicine ceremonies with the psilocybin experiences, I am sharing this all with you, tribe, because I do believe we need to share our medicine with each other. We need to share our lessons and our insights and our intuitive downloads and our gifts with each other. And remember, we're all mirrors for each other. And I do believe it's important for me to reflect back what I can, reflect back to you, um, what you might need to hear based on what I have traveled through on my journey. So again, when I say we need to share medicines, it's it's not just these plant medicine journeys that people need to do and talk about. It's all the different medicines. We all have gifts and medicines that the world needs. So I am sharing um, some of my journey, some of my medicines with you. And this is a big part of the reason why I see clients and I offer coaching and mentorship on spiritual wellness. It's why this whole podcast was created because I do want to share my medicine with you all. And it's also to better myself and beautify our world. So here we go. Here is how things started to come together on my spiritual journey. And I have four um, psilocybin ceremonies I want to talk about that I um, went through in 2020. So 
Um, again, if you remember, I kind of left you last episode with everything falling apart. (laughs) So COVID had hit, business evaporated overnight, and I went through a deep depression, lots of anxiety, panic attacks, and I was not taking very good care of myself. Um, and I finally hit a turning point where I was ready, you know, to, to start making some changes. And that's where the psilocybin uh, mushroom ceremonies were really coming in. So the first ceremony I want to tell you about today and how things actually started coming together. Um, So me and one of my dearest, dearest sisters uh, were up in Sedona. And we went into um, our psilocybin ceremony that day with the intention of really planting the seeds of our self-worth. Neither of us up to that point in our lives had felt like we were ever enough, that we were worthy enough, that we were worthy of love, that we were deserving enough, uh, deserving of love, or that we were enough. And so that was kind of our intention going into ceremony that day. And so we traveled down, you know, this little beautiful hiking path um, to the creek uh, at Sedona, which is going to be the setting for all of these ceremonies I'm talking about today. And we did a little ritual um, to begin where we saw ourselves as seeds being planted. And we were planting uh, ourselves as seeds of enoughness and knowing that we are enough. And we were reciting um, the affirmation, I am enough. I am enough. And, And we kind of uh, again, just in this ritual, we were like planting our seeds and and we were watching our seeds grow into these really strong trees with these really deep roots and, you know, these amazing strong trunks and these wide expansive branches. And it was, it was really beautiful to kind of do that together, you know, and be in that energy um, space together. So it's kind of um, the vision that we were holding as we kicked off our, our ceremony with that ritual. And I remember during that journey that day, I was holding um, this vision of myself as like this beautiful, you know, strong tree, feeling like I am enough. And I remember there was a little sunny spot um, that I had found and I was barefoot and I was kind of standing in mountain pose, if you know that from yoga. And I just remember, you know, I was like eyes closed, holding this vision in the sunshine. And I had this um, illumination of all of my chakras. And I literally saw the light like enter in through my crown chakra and just boom, 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 like light up all seven of my main chakras. And it was like I finally opened to allow the light of the universe and the love from the universe into my body and to fill it up. And I just remember I was like shooting light out of my crown um, or from my crown chakra down into my root chakra. And it was like creating, it was like going into the earth and it was like I was planting roots. It was a really beautiful vision. Um, and and I just remember again how powerful it was um, to feel that. And I remember my crown chakra felt like it was expanding out with all of these branches and out into the quantum field. And, and then what was really transformational was I just saw my heart glowing and it was just full of vibrancy and life and just radiating this magnificent, uh, magnificent field of love. And it was it was powerful. It was magnificent. Um, it was a beautiful vision. And I remember after um, this ceremony, and I do have four ceremonies I'm going to tell you guys about today, so I can't go like deep dive into every single one because um, the whole day was beautiful and filled with laughs. And we had this amazing sister time. Um, but after this ceremony, I remember feeling um, really called to draw a big tree on my bathroom mirror. Um, I love dry erase markers for like writing affirmations on my bathroom mirror. And I remember I drew this huge tree and it was kind of like the tree that I saw in my vision. This Again, lots of deep, hearty roots and a big trunk and these expansive branches. And I surrounded it with all of my I am affirmations. I am enough. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am beautiful. I am magnificent. And 
it was my reminder to myself every day about the intentions that I had set going into that ceremony. So, you know, a lot of the plant medicine journeys, the ceremony is about 10% of what you get out of it. 90% or so, you know, give or take, could be 80-20, but you know, the other 80-90% happens in your integration afterwards. So I always really do my best to be intentional. How do I take the lessons um, and the visions and the insights and the perspectives moving forward? So after this ceremony, I had this big, beautiful um, tree on my bathroom mirror with all of my affirmations. And it was this reminder to myself about the intentions I had set on that ceremony day. And it kept me marching toward this new vision of myself, um, to feel like I am enough, to feel like I am lovable, to feel like I am deserving and that I deserve all my desires and I deserve a new and a better life, um, from where I had been. So, so I'm getting some momentum going with that. Um, and again, this is kind of COVID time. So things are a little bit weird. I'm like trying to find things to do and navigate this space. Um, and late that spring, because really nobody was uh, working that time, life was pretty abnormal at that time, I was able to go up to Sedona again. So this is probably roughly three to four weeks after um, the previous ceremony, maybe even five weeks. And I go up to Sedona in late spring. And this time I go with three of my dear friends, um, all older than me. And it was a ceremony of just pure bliss and pure joy. And all of my friends that I was with at that point had sat in ayahuasca ceremonies And two of them were pretty advanced in the plant medicines. So it was really beautiful to go in as a tribe, you know, a tribe of brothers and sisters, just two men, um, another woman and myself, and just to be there together and to set intentions together um, and to go through rituals together of protecting our energy and, you know, honoring the plant and, and just honoring the sacredness of the medicine. And this was um, such a powerful experience for me because this was probably my first ceremony where I connected so deeply into a pure state of bliss and a pure state of joy. And what we would do when we would go um, in ceremonies, we'd line up along the creek in um, some hammocks. <laughs> so we would um, kind of like get cozy in a hammock uh, for our ceremony to just help us go within, but still be with, you know, Mother Earth. And then we kind of come out of, of our ceremony experience and our sit with the medicine. We would have this amazing nature to play in. So for me <laughs> that day... Even though I was enjoying the time in my hammock, I just remember I could not sit in my hammock. (laughs) All I wanted to do was to feel the earth. And I just wanted to sit in the earth and lay on the earth and, and be in the water. And I was getting so much deep peace and joy that came from this. And I felt so grounded. I was so in my body and I was happy about it. You know, after a lifetime of a lot of self-hatred and, you know, not loving my body, not loving myself, this joy and this bliss and this love was just overwhelming. It was fantastic. And I remember, you know, how beautiful it felt not only to be connected to our earth mother, but to have the community around me and to have, again, my brothers and my sister there with me. And again, not, not my real biological sister, (laughs) my tribe sister. Um, And so I am like sprawled out (laughs) in the dirt um, along the creek and just loving, loving, loving the nature time. And if you haven't been to Sedona, it is one of the most magical places uh, on our planet. I love the healing energies up there. And so while everyone was kind of in their hammocks and doing their journeys, I am just like hanging out in the dirt, just loving life, loving all the plants, loving all the animals and, um, and getting in the water. And I remember as, um, as my brothers and my sister started to come out of their ceremony and their journey experience, 
we were laughing so hard that day. There was so much joy and and happiness and playfulness in the air. And it was all the small things, you know, which I I think in in everyday life, we need to remember, you know, to not be so serious and uh, to play more and to laugh more. And and find joy in the little things. And so one of my friends, um, he is very experienced again in the plant medicines. And after ceremonies, he loves watermelon. And he brought this big thing of watermelon. And I just remember all of us sitting around at the edge of the creek, just eating this watermelon and just loving it. I mean, it was just like so juicy and it's like, you know, getting all over our faces and our fingers. And we were feeding it to some of the crawfish that were in the creek and just loving that. And um, and then I really uh, was feeling like I needed something salty. And um, my friend also brought some plantain chips that day. And I just remember me and those plantain chips were like magnets. <laughs> and it was so amazing to just like be munching and have the salt flavor with the sweetness of the watermelon. It was really beautiful. Um, somewhere at some point I'll have to share. I have a really funny picture of this day because I broke my sunglasses that day. And like one of the um, piece of the frame by the lens had cracked. And so I like lost one of the lenses and there's just a picture of me with the plantain chips with my broken sunglasses on. And actually I think I might even been wearing this hoodie that I'm wearing right now. Um, but I am just smiling my ass off and it was so, so beautiful. Um, because again, it was, I was finally tapping into my joy. And I was finally tapping into my bliss. And and this is what happens, you know, when we raise our vibration and we make changes and we open our minds to these other perspectives. So it was a beautiful day, a perfectly transformative day. And um, again, there's so many things coming into my head right now about this, but I have other ceremonies I want to tell you about. Um, But it was these two ceremonies, you know, in the spring, COVID's going on, it's 2020. And I absolutely decided (laughs) I need to make some big life changes. Um, So it was after these two ceremonies, I got myself a spiritual coach. I got myself a business coach. I um, became way more consistent with my yoga. Um, I also started committing to a sacred routine of meditation and journaling every single morning. Um, And I really was ready to kick my butt into gear. Um, So it's actually, um, side note, I didn't think of this until just now. It was the time where I really let go of cannabis as part of my life um, as well. I felt like I had really been uh, using that as a crutch. And across those two ceremonies, I identified the fact that um, it just wasn't the medicine for me anymore. So that was also a big part um, of kicking my butt into gear. So, um, about four to six weeks after that, I went to about a third ceremony of 2020. So this is now summer. And, um, just after a few weeks of being with my coaches and really feeling empowered and making some life changes, uh, we went on a girl's trip. Um, me and two of my dear sisters, um, went up and all of us have had, you know, some history of abuse, um, some history of substance abuse, and we all had feelings of unworthiness in our history. So we were all kind of, um, going with similar intentions, of course, our own individual ones too. But I remember preparing for that, um, ceremony day and I get very, um, very into my dosing uh, of of psilocybin mushrooms. And I do it all very intuitively. And I remember as I was preparing for that trip, I um, picked out one mushroom and it was a big one. And when I put it on the scale, this one mushroom weighed 2.22 grams. And I am a huge fan of angel numbers. Fun little fact about me. So 2.22, as soon as I saw that on the scale, I was like, oh, yes, like 
this is me being in flow. This is my sign from the universe. This is like perfect for me. So, um, so that day I I go up with my two sisters and we go down to the Creek. (laughs) We set up our hammocks, uh, you know, doing, doing all the things that we do for ceremony. But what was really unique about, um, this trip is, um, the two sisters I was with, one older than me, one younger than me, they were almost about um, like kind of mother-daughter age, and they both had so much in common. The The motherly uh, sister was a lot like my, you know, daughter-sister. Um, they were a lot like each other's mom or daughter, respectively. So they had so much in common, and they got along so well. It was the first time they had met each other. Um but I knew that in bringing them together and in seeing them together, really, there was so much healing for them to do, to be mirrors of each other for what each had gone through in their experience as a mother and what it was like to be a mother, a young mother with a child and what it was like to be a young child with a young mother. And and so they were having an amazing connection. And what was beautiful about it is it allowed me to just kind of go do my own thing. (laughs) And I fell deep into my ceremony that day. Um, Sometimes the medicine comes on quickly for me. Sometimes it takes a while. This was a fast and deep um, ceremony. And I remember relaxing into my hammock. And I just remember my heart opening up and finding, again, this real deep peace and bliss and joy And I remember recognizing um, that I could tell that day my vibration had increased, you know, and that I was just connected into so much more self-love. And I was so grateful for myself um, and so much more appreciative of myself and what I had been doing for myself. And I was so honored um, to have my sisters there with me and experience this with them, um, and I was so honored to like witness their growth and their expansion and and them releasing all that they needed to let go of. And at two different points later in that ceremony, I was holding space for each of them. And it was really beautiful um, to just be there and, and to be in a plant medicine journey with someone and to hold space for them. I believe it's one of the most sacred things we can do. And I feel so honored to have been given so many chances to do that for my brothers and sisters. Um, But what was really interesting is, again, I I felt this heart opening, right, in this this journey. And so I'm going to end that story there because what came out of this journey, I think, is the most magnificent and the most profound Um, remember a lot of our work happens in integration. So it's about two weeks after the ceremony and I'm going up to Michigan to go to my old family cottage. Um, I'm originally from Michigan and so I'm leaving Arizona, going up to Michigan and it was a bit stressful because, you know, it's kind of high to COVID. There's a lot of fear going around. And I remember I was really discouraged on that trip because, because of COVID and I was coming from Arizona and I was on an airplane, nobody really wanted to hang out with me. (laughs) So a lot of people I would normally see and a lot of family I would normally see um, weren't going to connect. So I was like, wow, what am I going to do with my time here? And because of that, I um, actually was journaling one day and I was all alone at the cottage and I was, I was reading or writing in my journal. And I remember I was looking at all these families out on the lake and, you know, this, this cute couple was out at the sandbar doing their thing. And I, I journaled that afternoon, um, early evening, asking for my partner to come in, asking for, you know, my, my next life partner. And really feeling ready for that and really connecting into the vibration of what that felt like as I was watching all of these families out there. So I got on Bumble. I don't remember if it was that day or the day before. It was like right around the time I'd done that journaling. And I was on Bumble in Michigan really just to find someone to have a beer with, go paddleboarding or kayaking with. Um, because again, I wasn't going to see many other people otherwise. So it was within 48 hours of getting on Bumble and writing in this journal entry, I ended up connecting 
immediately with this man, um, who I now know is my sacred partner, um, but I didn't quite know all of it at the time. Um, his name is Nick, and he is um, literally from Sedona, and his birthday is February 22nd, or 222. So if you remember, my dose for my ceremony two weeks prior was 2.22 grams. I'm in Sedona. I have all this love in my heart. I'm ready for a partner. And then I meet Nick, my now sacred partner. (laughs) Um, Coincidence? I don't know. Um, I think we get what we ask for. And I think there are a lot of synchronicities in this world. And there was a lot of magical energy around me. So I someday will share a lot more about our connection and, and how we met and just all the synchronicities. But so I'm in Michigan. I meet Nick. Everything is good. Summer's going great. Life's starting to really go great. And I go in um, in fall. Uh, of It's like the beginning of fall. It was, I think, right at the end of September. I go into my final ceremony of 2020. And actually, um, fun note, final ceremony um, that I've been in since. So I've not sat with um, psilocybin mushrooms and that medicine since the ceremony So this trip was just uh, me and one of my dear best friends. And he was going for a hero dose this day. If you know um, mushrooms, that is a five gram dose. It is a lot. Um, But that's really where you go in and do some serious work. Um, So that day, I kept to about half of what he was doing. I took around like 2.5 because I just wanted to make sure that someone was a little bit more of sound mind, just in case anything happened. Um, So my personal um, experience and journey that day was a very beautiful. Um, I remember the most notable thing that I remember as I was laying in the hammock was that I was at one point covered in snakes. And not literally, this is in my vision. And There were hundreds of snakes all over my body, in my body, moving in and out of my body, moving through me, in, around me. But I did not have one ounce of fear. And I was just like, hey, what are you guys doing? (laughs) Like, you're there's a lot of you, and it seems like you're doing a lot. So, like, what's going on? And they're like, don't you worry about it. You just enjoy yourself and we're going to do the work for you. Now, if you know anything about animal totems, um, snakes are a very transformational animal. Um, there's a lot more we could say about that, but um, but I've always had a bit of a fear of snakes. So to just embrace them, you know, and let go of that fear felt really amazing. And I remember I kept like checking back in, I'd like have this vision and then I'd check back in and the snakes were still there doing their work. And I'd be like, Hey, are everything good? And they're like, yep, just keep having a good time. So at one point I sunk into this vision of me and Nick and, um, I even wrote a poem about the experience. Um, and if you guys ever want to hear some poetry, let me know because <laughs> um, I have a lot of poems. But I, I wrote a poem about that experience and the vision was just of he and I being together. And I had met Nick in Michigan at the time he was living there, um, but he was about to deploy to go overseas. And even though our connection was so strong and he seemed like this gift from the universe, there was just so much that made it seem impossible almost to work out. Um, but on this day, this vision that I had of us like playing together and it was like, even though our physical bodies were separate, our souls had been connected and and been playing for a really long time. And so I was just in this immense amount of like love and connection and gratitude and, um, and just blissed out with the experience. And it gave me a lot of comfort and knowing that there's so much um, there with Nick. And and so I decided I did want to move forward and pursue that relationship and see what was to come of it. Um, And again, more to come on all of the relationship details at some point. But the other part of the ceremony is a bit different. 
because as I'm coming out of this amazing blissful state where these snakes were just doing their work on everything, I woke up and I looked on my leg in the hammock and there was a spider on me, but it was a pretty big one. Um, I don't have a big fear of spiders at all. Um, so I wasn't afraid or anything, but I felt like it was actually the spirit, uh, Iktomi, which is, a um, kind of like this trickster spirit in Lakota, uh, Native American tradition. And, um, anyway, it was, I felt like this Iktomi, um, kind of waking me up out of like my ceremony bliss space. I felt like all of a sudden, like the tides were turning. Like I felt like there was a message coming in. Um, and I do believe he was bringing me a message. So as I'm coming to, and kind of like opening my eyes and like getting back grounded in my surroundings, I realized my friend that I was there with, who remember was doing the hero's dose, was in deep, deep pain and suffering and struggling. And he was literally crawling around at the water's edge, moaning like he was dying, like he literally had the energy that death was upon him. And as an empath, especially when you do plant medicines, I am hypersensitive to other people's energies and I can feel their emotions and he was not good. So I kind of got myself together and and approached him. And honestly, I could use an entire whole episode (laughs) or more to talk about the experience that we had together. Um... But from the time I got up and kind of was coming out of my ceremony and was with him, we were there for about three more hours together because he had gone so deep and he was going through a lot in his personal life um, and his family life. And there was a lot of pain that he was working through and tapping into. And what I really want to share in that and in holding that space for him and being there for him and going through that experience for him, the gift that I got out of that, you know, he still gives me gratitude and thanks um, for that, even though it's like over a year ago now, um, for being there for him that day. But what it taught me that day is that I realized I am an incredible healer and I am very gifted um, at what I do. And you know, between my knowledge of of Reiki energy medicine and being able to hold space for someone who is in deep pain and and providing comfort and offering compassion and and listening with love and and connecting into them and into their heart and into their emotions and giving guidance, it was in this space uh, on this ceremony day, I realized how gifted I truly am. And again, if you remember back to my first uh, ceremony I talked about today, You know, it was growing the tree of enoughness and realizing I am enough. And so to be in the ceremony, to connect into my gifts and to realize that I have a lot to offer and that I am meant to do far greater things than I was doing was, it's even giving me goosebumps right now um, talking about it, but it was such a gift. So you know, while my friend thought it was such a gift for me to just be there, what I got out of it um, was profound. And while I have started to take a lot of big steps forward in sharing my gifts, I do know that there's even more to come. Um, I definitely someday will be called to facilitate plant medicine ceremonies and and help in that space because I do feel we need that. Um, but yeah. So that was a fourth ceremony of 2020 that I'm talking about today. There was a few others sprinkled in there, but um, don't want to go too long on episodes for you guys. So that takes me really to the end of my psilocybin ceremonies. Um, I don't really like doing uh, deep journeys in the wintertime because it's cold. (laughs) And I get really cold um, when I do plant medicines. So um, 2020 kind of ended that. And then you'll hear when I talk about my ayahuasca uh, plant medicine journeys of 2021, um, how I shifted uh, into some different medicines and uh, away from psilocybin. Not that I think it's bad. Not that I'm saying I'll never do it again. It's just the medicine has to call you and you have to connect to it. 
So by the end of 2020, all these ceremonies, you know, I was in a very sober place in my life. I've let go of a lot of addictions and um, my reliance on cannabis, especially. Um, I was in a wonderful, committed relationship. I dove in deep uh, with Nick. I had worked with my business coach uh, to grow my business and start getting momentum building there. And so at the end of 2020, I was finally feeling like I was embodying who I was meant to be. Now, was it all perfect yet? No. Was there still room to get better? Yep. And I knew that. And I know that's always going to be part of my journey. But to know the joy, to know the love, to know my gifts, to know my worth, to know I am enough. All of that came from the psilocybin plant medicine journey. And and I am so grateful for that medicine because I know what it has given me in return and the gifts and the insights and the lessons it has bestowed upon me. So I'm not sharing, again, all of this um, because I'm saying everybody needs to go down plant medicine uh, journeys and, and go down a plant medicine path in order to produce positive changes in your life. Um, I do believe that the medicine has to call you. Um, so, you know, if you ever feel like you're forcing it, um, it's probably not for you. You want to be in flow with it and feel called to it and magnetized to it. However, I, I do feel, and I, I truly know in my heart that these stories, um, from my experiences with the medicines are meant to be shared and they're meant to be shared now more than ever. You know, I hope if nothing else, you can connect into the power of intention. And when you set an intention and take actionable steps toward making that happen, it freaking works, you guys. <laughs> um, so again, I hope you can learn something from this. I I am on this platform now to share my experiences with you, to share my wisdom, to share my medicine, to share my gifts. And I hope that um, with that, you know, and with each other, um, we can all become better because the world needs us. And she is calling us to make the world more beautiful. So with that, I'll leave you. Thanks for sticking with me on this episode, you all. And as always, much love to you, tribe. Until next time. Hey tribe, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this podcast, make sure to like the video below and then click subscribe so you never miss an episode. And remember, I've got lots of free resources available to you to support your healing, transformation, and ascension so you can help in making this a more beautiful world for us all. Make sure you check them out in the description below. Thanks again for tuning in tribe. And until next time, much love to you all.